365 is on the road here in Silicon Valley at Marvell Technology Headquarters. We are here talking about my favorite topic, and that is data center AI. So much investment with the hyperscalers are putting in there, and we seem to be in this period where customization is important to get the performance, to get the uh, speed, get the cost and the power at the right place. I can't imagine a better person to talk about this than Nigel with Marvell. How are you? I'm doing great, Patrick. Great to have you here. Yeah, it's great to be here. I love to visit and uh, hear what you guys have to say. Hopefully, uh, we can give you some insights you can think about as well. Absolutely, it's, all the time. Yeah. So I want to start out. Um, you know, I said in the in the in the prelude here, the industry always goes through. It's like an accordion, right? We go through these. Uh, mass customization, uh, where things are custom, and even like mainframes and mini computers, everybody was doing their own thing. And then client server hit, where it was all about standards, right? And we only built standard stuff. But we, we're in now this period where customizing chips is the thing to do. Can you tell me why people are doing this? Yeah, I think at the highest level, there's two real drivers. One is the total cost of ownership. All these cloud operators are competing with one another and they're looking yeah. to deliver an optimal solution, right? Because they don't want to be a commodity. So that's one is the total cost of ownership. And there's many factors they have to customize, not only silicon, yeah. it's across the board. The other one is differentiation tied to the services they're providing. Yeah. And that's another key factor. Again, back to the commoditization, they need to really optimize the service they're delivering to make it optimal at scale, right? right? The real problem they're trying to solve is at scale. And that drives the need to lower costs, get more out of the silicon, lower your power, as all these factors become bigger and bigger challenges for them to get to the next level of service and customer base. Yeah, it makes it, it makes total sense. And you know, the power is just such a driver um, that um, you know, people are talking about where do I put my nuclear reactor? Uh, we're talking about gigawatt uh, facilities, and it's just it's just mind blowing. And the only way that you can get uh, uh, the highest density and, and compute and networking in there is to, is to go custom. Um, I'm just amazed that so many people uh, are are doing this, right? Yeah, and it's amazing you bring up this gigawatt, right? Just put that in perspective. One gigawatt is the peak power for the whole city of San Francisco. Yeah, one gigawatt for the right. whole city. That's probably a million or so people. New York's 10 gigawatts peak right. power, which is about 10, 11 million people. So that just puts it into perspective, a whole city needs a gigawatt, and we're talking about a data center needing a gigawatt. Right. So this is a huge problem, and what compounds the problem is it's a race to get more AI out there, right? So right. they don't even have time to plan, get the power. So it's, it's kind of a real huge challenge. Yeah. Customized silicon or custom silicon enables them to get there faster. Yeah. Um, as an industry analyst, I think well, I was on the road, I think 42 weeks this year, and I go to all the hyperscaler shows, right? And I also go to industry shows like this, and um, it seems like a lot of the talk is about custom CPUs and XPUs, but it doesn't stop there. So what are the chips that are being customized today inside of the hyperscalers? It's a great question because I think if you go back in time, right, cloud computing started maybe in the early 2000s. AWS was what, 2006 they started? Yeah. They started just putting a data center off-prem, right, and hosting. But then they quickly realized to create more differentiation and not become a utility, they had to start customizing silicon or developing uh, custom silicon. And they, they acquired a company called Annapurna that started doing custom NICs, right? So you're starting to see that happen across the spectrum. Right. All the hyperscalers are doing this, the NICs, the DPUs, the HSMs. They're looking to get the most out of their platforms to differentiate and lower their TCO. Uh, and it's just continuing, right? I think Marvell, we see it continuing to where you see multiple of these pieces, the networking, the compute, the storage, starting to repartition and remodel where you have networking going into compute devices and vice versa with storage into compute elements. And I think we're just in the early, early innings of this, but to your point, it's happened in the past and it'll continue to accelerate as these, as the prize gets bigger and bigger, right? This is a, a huge prize, as you know, this is like internet in 2000, this is AI 2024, and in 10 years we'll see who the winners are. And this is 
how the game's going to be played using custom silicon to win that war. Yeah, FOMO is a great uh, driver, and we're seeing this today. What I'm fascinated with is what the architecture of the data center are going to look like in five years. Today, they, they look a bit similar, and I think you might see some bifurcation in the way that uh, th these, these hyperscalers uh, uh, lay them out in the future. So, um, so we talked hyperscalers, right? Can you talk, name the hyperscalers that are doing that? I, I may know a few of them, but... Yeah. Uh, what I can say is what's in the public domain. So these yeah. companies have been pretty vocal about their custom silicon because they realize it is going to be a differentiator for them, yeah. right? And <laughs> I mentioned Annapurna with Amazon. They've been yeah. doing custom silicon from the networking side and on. Google has been doing TPUs. That's right. Um, we announced with Meta a NIC device, the FB right. NIC at OCP this past year. Uh, Microsoft's been public about all the products they've been doing at their That's Ignite right. uh, shows, right? Be it custom AI chips, be it HSMs. So you are seeing every major yeah. hyperscaler have a big initiative in this. And again, it's to make sure they can differentiate and optimize their TCO and not just become a commodity. And I think that's the biggest fear out there, right. especially in this AI era, where today there is one huge leader driving the market, which is great for the market, but longer term, there's concerns for these companies on how do I compete that's right. with all these other folks, right? So obviously you're doing this. Uh, who else is in this custom game? I, I think given how complex these AI chips are, you're talking about three and a half D, three D types of solutions where you're packaging multiple memory devices, chiplets, um, stacking technology. There's only really two major companies yeah. in silicon who do this in a custom manner, and that's Broadcom and Marvell. Yeah. We're the two companies who have the IP portfolio, the experience, and the know-how to really execute this for custom silicon. So, Nigel. What are the elements that, so it's a two-horse race, we've established this right now, but what are the conditions uh, for having the best partner? Like, what does it include? What are the building blocks that are important to have? You talked about 2.5D, or sorry, 3.5D and the packaging, but, but what else matters? Yeah, and I think it's a multifaceted question with two sides. There's the technology side and then there's the business model, partnership model. Yeah. So let's start first with the technology. So foundational technology for data centers, you're operating at high, high bandwidth. So CERTES technology. So CERTES technologies is the technology that connects all these chips together. And you want to serialize it. That's what CERTES stands for, serializer, deserializer. So you need to get to the highest speed to move the bits as quickly as possible in the quickest right. matter of time. So CERTES technology is a foundational block for this AI era. Or what we like to call it, Marvell, accelerated infrastructure for artificial intelligence. AI for AI. Right. And for AI for AI, some of the key technologies outside of CERTES is the other key IP blocks around process node. So process node is the shrinking of semiconductor process. Yeah. And you want to be on the bleeding edge for a couple of reasons, but the main ones is lower power and higher density. And you need to have all this IP on those process nodes. You need someone who's investing in those process nodes ahead of the time to accelerate time to market to get more compute power at a lower power footprint. So I would summarize with uh, CMOS technology process node, IP with CERTES IP being the most critical, but there's like die-to-die -die technologies where you want to connect all these chiplets together. And that really pivots into this advanced packaging that we talked a little bit earlier, where you have to really be able to stack horizontally and vertically. And this is getting more and more challenging. So that's on the technology side. On the business side, it's quite interesting because, as we talked about, the cloud operators have different pieces of silicon. Right. Some are hugely complex. Some are a little bit more simple. Now, they want partners that are going to satisfy their whole spectrum of needs, not, oh, I only want the most juicy socket, right? Yeah. They want someone that they can trust and is going to be there for all their different needs. So that's on the business model of having the flexibility to take on even lower volume, not as... Uh, complex devices, as well as the ability to do multiple different pieces. Because some of these cloud operators have huge design teams that are designing specific IP that's unique to that cloud operator. But sometimes they don't have the people to do that, so they have a spec right. and they say, hey, do you have front-end designers who can design the code, RTL for that, 
and then package it all together. Right. So having the ability to do the spectrum and not saying, oh, I only do back end or I only do front end, but being able to provide and offer the spectrum as a true partner. Yeah, does that also apply to, you know, I hear a lot of terms scale up and scale out. And the scale outside, it could be uh, multiple kilometers be between um, uh, data centers and, and obviously clusters in, inside of those data centers. Uh, you can be on a campus uh, or you can be just inside of your data center. Does that variability matter in this custom business? It absolutely does because what we're seeing is these technologies starting to mesh, right? Networking yeah. and compute and storage all starting to, to gel together. So when you look at scale up, that's about building the biggest supercomputer you can do, right? right? Where you share all the memory resources, all the compute resources using a scale up fabric. Right. That doesn't go typically far distances. You're really restricted to today, mainly a rack, maybe moving to multi racks now, um, probably be limited inside a data center over time. Um, and when you move to these more multi-rack architectures, you'll need interconnect technology that can actually go further, which is typically optical technology. Right. And we see the need for CPO type of technology for that scale up architecture. While scale out is where you're connecting all these supercomputers together to finish a training model in the most sufficient time. And in those cases, as you pointed out, you might have one big football field data center that can do it. But as we just talked about, power is becoming a bigger issue. So what they're starting to do is use multi-site data centers. And it, the easiest model is to do a multi-campus, right? Within a, a region, you'll have small data centers that are all interwined connected together. Um, so you would need another optical, which we call coherent light right. technology for that. Um, and then the other one is across a metro area, which is like 80 kilometers to 200 kilometers, right. where, where Marvell is a pioneer with our colors technology, which is our DCI product line, where you're able to like cluster multiple of these regional data centers together. So every cloud is unique, meaning they will have different mixing of data centers, architectures, and that drives more customization because right. they are unique, right? Um, and that's that's how these all come together. And, that's why I mentioned that Marvell with Broadcom are the only ones who have all these pieces of technology to build a custom infrastructure. I appreciate that. So you have a, a, your merchant business, dare I call it the off the shelf. There's nothing off the shelf, but it kind of is, particularly when you buttress it next to custom. How are you keeping pace to be able to do all these designs? I mean, is it AI in EDA? Is that one way you're keeping up? I talked to Chris Koopmans. Uh, today, and he talked about parallelizing teams uh, and also that chiplets help. You can parallelize. That's right. So, there's a lot of things we're doing to do more of these chips in parallel. You know, there's technologies like EDA in the cloud. We announced a, a partnership, um, a multi generational agreement with AWS where we're doing EDA in the cloud with them. And that enables us really to have the compute resources and storage resources to do multiple products in parallel and deal with the spikes that go through when you're developing a product. So that's the EDA in the cloud. We're using AI technologies to accelerate development in many facets, verifying chips, enabling the layouts of chips. So that's a spectrum of things that AI is going to help us yeah. complete things in a more efficient manner, increase productivity. And then the other side is having the scale. And I think when you go back to this merchant or off the shelf versus custom, they actually feed off each other, right? Okay. So you, you continue to, you do a merchant product, that IP gets used in the custom and vice versa. So you really want to have this yin and yang type of approach where you develop this product and right. then people are like, oh, that's cool IP, can you put it in my custom chip? And then so maybe you're doing something custom and they're like, I hey, maybe we should put that in our merchant or off the shelf product. So right. it actually feeds off each other to build the scale and get us more opportunities going forward. So, so it's really exciting. It's been a great conversation, Nigel. I love the custom conversation. I really appreciate your time and hopefully we can do this again to get an update of where you are in six months to a year. Sounds good, Patrick. Thank you for the time. Appreciate that. So you heard it here at Marvell uh, Technology Headquarters. We are talking custom uh, networking, custom XPUs, HSM, DSPs, you name it, everything is going custom with the hyperscalers. An exciting time to be here. Check out all of our interviews uh, in and around uh, Marvell Technology and hit that subscribe button. Have a good one.